Hello viewers, once again it's me, Ewen One Nomran, and this is my channel, It Pays to Fear God. This is where we learn about God, His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and their kingdom purpose. The three most important subjects that we can ever learn about, talk about, or discuss in the entire Holy Bible according to John chapter 17 verse 3. These subjects that we're going to be learning about today is a very interesting but important subject, and that subject is captioned, What is Love? However, before we're going to listen to that, we're once again going to hear a tune that some of us might enjoy, and while that tune is playing, you can go ahead and subscribe, and also click the notification bell so that you can be the first to come when we make our next video. <laughs> Once again, the subject that we are going to be learning about today is captioned, What is Love? And I'll be inviting my brother to come tell us some interesting things about this subject. Love is obviously a big part of life, whether secular or Christian. But like with all things, the Bible regulates the kind of love we can have. So it's important that we know how to love in the way that God would want us to. Now, love in Christianity is essentially composed of three levels. And the first level that I'm going to talk about is physical love. That's just regular, ordinary love. A strong bond that someone has for someone else. Sometimes it's mutual, sometimes it's not. But the point is, it's merely a strong bond. For example, in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1, Jonathan had a bond with David, and that bond was mutual. The two of them became very strong friends. And in Exodus chapter 21, verses 5 to 6, anticipating that there would be slaves that would fall into this condition, God told Moses to tell the people that... After seven years, if a slave didn't want to leave his master, he could be given provision to stay with him forever. Obviously, it would take a very strong bond for a slave to give up his freedom for someone. However, most love in the Bible comes from romantic love. Love that comes from the biological process that might eventually produce children. There were many married couples in the Bible. Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and his wives, Solomon and his 700 wives. There were many people who had uh, relationships with the opposite sex in the Bible. Samson fell in love with three women in Judges chapter 14 verses 1 to 3 and Judges chapter 16 verses 1 to 4. In fact, love is such a common theme in the Bible that there's a whole book on it, the Song of Solomon, which talks about the story of two lovers who eventually, you know, meet. They tell, they praise each other, they talk about their love. It's a whole book. Love is a very common theme in the Bible. However, love wasn't passively described in the Bible. It was enforced. There were rules to it. For example, 
we aren't just supposed to love uh, our husbands or wives or maybe our friends. No, we're even supposed to love our enemies, according to Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 and 46. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And, of course, there is that famous line of Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. However, this isn't physical love we're talking about here. There's also spiritual love involved, and those, and that is the next two stages. You see, the second stage of love is sacrifice, and that is spiritual or physical. It can be either way. And sacrifice is important to love because greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John chapter 15 verse 13. Sacrifice is what drives great love, and there are examples of that in the Bible. Let's go back to Jonathan. In 1 Samuel chapter 20 verses 30 to 31, Saul reminded Jonathan that if he helped David take the throne, then he, Jonathan, would not have the right to rule Israel like he would have if David was dead and if Saul was still in power. But in 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 17, Jonathan had this to say to David, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee. And this also saw my father knoweth. He was right there with David, supporting him in his quest to take the throne, even though he was sacrificing his chance to rule. That is what true love allows you to do. Sacrifice for others. We can also look at the example of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 10. He went and sacrificed Abraham. His son, his only son, because God told him to. And even though God stopped him, he didn't actually go and kill Isaac in the end, it still shows love because Abraham did it with the intention that Isaac was going to die. And it was only Abraham's love for God that could allow Abraham to do such a thing. And in turn, just as how a human showed his love for God, God has also showed his love for humans by sending Jesus Christ to this earth, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. And for this sacrifice, since we need to love God, according to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, we also need to perform a sacrifice ourselves, mainly of ourselves, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. We have to sacrifice our lusts for this world, throw them all out, uh, get rid of all the enjoyment that we get from sinning against God, and focus on worshiping Him. But also, we are required to help others, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. And what does that exactly mean? I will explain. Here is where the third level of love comes in, and that is worshiping God. How does that make sense? Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 10 make it clear. Verse 9 of that passage lists several commandments. Don't do adultery, don't steal, don't kill others all kinds of stuff that is banned. But then it says that all of these are summed up in one law. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Because if you love your neighbor, you're not going to steal from them, or kill them, or commit adultery with their spouse, or do any bad stuff like that to them. So therefore, as verse 10 implies, if you worship God, then you love your neighbor. However, there is an even more striking part of this whole idea of loving 
by worshiping God, as proposed by Romans chapter 14, verse 15. This verse says that if you don't live in a lifestyle that's suitable to God, then you are destroying the people around you. If your meat uh, grieves someone else, then you are destroying them. It's a bit confusing, but let me just explain it. Someone's meat is the way they live. If you live a sinful life, then other people who are outside the faith can stay outside because they think, oh, this is a good way to live. I don't need to be a Christian. And people inside the faith can look at you and say, actually, I like this guy's life. I'm going to leave Christianity. And you don't want that. Because since Christianity leads to eternal life and a sinful life doesn't, then you're killing them. You're taking them away from life and bringing them to death. So therefore, we want to live godly lives. Because by doing so, we are giving other people life. And you can't give someone life unless you love them. That's another way that worshiping God equals love. It's the reason why you can't worship God without love. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. And it is the reason why you can't even know God. According to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In conclusion, you can think of this whole love idea as a kind of cycle. You start by loving God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 and 38. Then you can progress to actually worshiping God. Obviously, for the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, and his countenance doth behold the upright. Psalms chapter 11, verse 7. You can't get God to love us, and therefore have our love reciprocated if we don't worship him. And then, to worship God, we need to love others, as shown by Romans chapter 13, verse 10. Because not only is it beneficial to worshiping God, as I explained before, loving others is worshiping God. Because by living a righteous life, you are helping others possibly access eternal life. And then, when we love others, we can finally complete the cycle by loving God. Because when we love others, we end up loving God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 16, this whole cycle is necessary because if we don't love the people around us, how can we love God? If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? First John chapter 4, verse 20. However, it is important for us to realize that despite the fact that I have made this look easy, it is actually quite tough especially since we have to make sacrifices every step of the way. Because as I said before, love, true love, requires sacrifice. That John chapter 15 verse 13 again. And that is the end of my talk on the subject, what is love? Thank you for listening. So that, my viewers, is some information on the subject, what is love? I have to emphasize something that my brother said, and that thing is, love is sacrifice. Love is charity. Free 1 Corinthians chapter 13, from verses 1 straight down to verse 13. The whole chapter talking about how when we say we love somebody, but we do not sacrifice things for our that person, we are not loving that person. Many parents are saying, oh, I love my children, I love my children, but what will make them successful, good discipline, good training, those things never come 
to them. Husbands tell their wives, oh, I love my wife, I love my wife. But the things that will make her a good woman, accepted by God to salvation, playing her own role, talked about in Ephesians chapter 5, from verses 22 to 24, 1 Peter chapter 3, from verses 1 to 6, etc. They won't at least try to do certain things to give room for such things to happen. They just want to say that, but they don't want to do the things that will ensure that. The Bible has talked about how each person in their own part of the hierarchy of obedience has to make sacrifices so that the low ones can grow. If we do things that will spiritually weaken others, whether it's our children, whether it's our wife, whether it's our friends, etc., we are spiritually killing them, and God will not allow us to have eternal life if we are being a bad influence. If we Romans chapter 14, verse 15. Rather, we should love others, and that love is what my brother just discussed. It's very important that we keep this in mind. To conclude this episode, we are once again going to hear a tune that some of us might enjoy. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something most importantly, please try to subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't already, and also share this video to friends, relatives, well-wishers, etc. Thank you for listening.